morning everybody. So, let me just introduce uh, ourselves. So, I am Anand, um, this is Rahul, Hi. we work for Cisco. Uh, there are a couple of more folks who had contributed to this idea, but could not make it unfortunately, Satya and Minakshi. <coughs> so, we work on a product in Cisco, which is uh, providing VPN as a service. It is a cloud VPN product and there we use NFVs day in and day out. And what we felt was missing in that gave a way for us to come up with this idea. So, this is something we did on our spare time. So, what better forum than to bring it up here and discuss with you guys. So, so this is the idea that we came up with uh, running NFV service chains on Docker containers as against running on virtual machines. So, before we get into details, I will just give a quick intro to people who are new to this. So, Docker is a piece of software which helps you to wrap your software along with its dependencies, binaries into a single file system along with the run times and everything so that it is it runs the same anywhere you run it. So, the, the dependency problems, version problems are all gotten rid of. So, that that is the Docker solution. And what is the difference between a virtual machine and a Docker instance? If you see, the Docker engine runs on operating system while it shares the kernel libraries from the operating system, whereas your application's uh, uh, namespace is separated out into a container and all the containers share the kernel namespace with the operating system. The advantage Docker brings is that or any container technology for that matter brings is that the extra layer of a hypervisor is gotten rid of. So, that means your extra hyper call overhead is not there. At the same time, uh, in a virtual environment, you do not have to replicate that many operating system instances. If your purpose is to run only a dedicated service, you can just run it on a container instead of replicating that many operating systems. So, as I said, this, uh, this has the same kind of uh, advantages. It is uh, it reduces latency and it is easily shippable and uh, very easy to replicate and share. And some of the challenges that we have faced when containers first came up was Multi-host networking was initially a bit of a problem which was solved much later and similarly uh, there were other challenges that were faced uh, with respect to network functions which was also overcome uh, over a period of time. Okay, so, before we get into uh, what is SDN and NFV, let us look at what is middle boxes. So, when a packet travels through a network, especially if you take in case of uh, VPN, so you would want to add multiple filtering and before it get uh, in between it gets routed, it would go through a set of filters. It could be firewall or load balancer. So, those guys are called as the middle boxes, which is other than the routing and switching. They are usually used for providing SLA, service assurance, quality of service. Those kind of capabilities are assured by running through these middle boxes. So, they are traditionally hardware boxes. So, it becomes difficult to move them around or if you want to change the path or the sequence, it becomes difficult for you have to hardwire them and stuff. So, that paved way for virtual middle boxes, which were called as VNFs, so virtual network functions. <coughs> so, typically they are uh, very useful in a cloud environment where you can spawn them in uh, on demand, so easy to scale. Some of the drawbacks of middle boxes are overcome by NFV. Now, what is SDN? SDN allows you to control your network devices irrespective of what kind of device it is. You could have a Cisco device or a Juniper device, the, the CLIs might be different, but SDN allows you to centrally control them irrespective of what kind of device it is. Now, NFV is those physical devices are just converted into virtual machines, hardware converted into software with the same capability and you can move them around anywhere and provision wherever you want. Now, what is service function chaining? It is the sequence of NFCs that you put together. NFVs that you put, put together so that you achieve a certain assurance. Uh, it, it could be you, know, you want to uh, assure some, some firewall or you want to do some packet filtering or some WAN acceleration. So, so, different kind of functions are there. So, depending on the requirement, you put them to uh, through a sequence of functions. So, that is what your service function chaining is. So, many, many people would confuse whether to use SDN or NFV though they actually solve completely different set of problems. SDN actually solves the question of who controls what. So, you centrally try to control uh, your devices. NFV, what runs where? 
that is whether you want to run uh, whatever is a physical component you know, where you want to run it which network do you want to run it in for what packets do you want to run it so these are two different problems that they solve and actually when you use them together the power is immense you can uh, achieve much more things by using them together so there's no question of sdn or nfv it's, it's more of sdn and nfv gives you more things to achieve these are some of the terms that we would have heard of i'm just giving a clarity to that so as SDN and NFV started growing, uh, there was a need for making things standard. How devices are controlled and configured, there, there was a standard that was required. So hence ONF was formed, that is the Open Networking Foundation. And uh, their first standard was actually called as Open Flow, which defines how your flow should be controlled and um, how, how do you configure different flows. Open Daylight is a open source project by Linux Foundation, which actually implements multiple protocols including the open flow protocol and the, the point is to popularize the whole SDN and NFV and also standardize it. OP NFV is basically an open platform for NFV that, that is uh, uh, like a consortium which brings together a lot of companies, your enterprises, service providers, customers, developers all together into a single forum where you can standardize things and in accelerate your innovation of course. These are some sample network functions, um, like I said, firewalls, packet filters, and uh, virtual routers. So these are some examples of virtual routers, load balancers, and WAN optimizers, intrusion detection. So all these are depending on whether the customer wants to put through their packet, uh, you know, put their packet through these uh, functions or not. So it helps if you can spin them off on demand, depending on what is your type of application or you want to provide one of these as a service, you want to see firewall as a service, or just um, intrusion detection as a service, you can turn it on on demand depending on the type of application as well. So in case of a video streaming, you would not want to put them through all of them. Maybe a WAN optimizer would be good because that would accelerate your packet transfer. So these are some of the uh, advantages that we get by running NFVs as containers. They are very easy to scale and on demand. And we know Docker uh, just runs anywhere the same. So it would help if you can run your NFVs also anywhere. Just pick it from here, put it there, it runs the same. So that's a boon. And of course, your latency is reduced. And as we said, the hypervisor's overload is reduced because of which you get better performance and also better utilization of your hardware resources, better than what you can do with virtual machines. And the fact that Docker or any other container technology already has a big set of established tools to manage and configure and deploy containers, it helps that you can use those directly to deploy your NFVs as well. <clears throat> there's a lot of research work and uh, experimentation going on in this field, and there's a lot of positive results in running NFVs as containers. Thank you, Anant, for uh, just going over the terms and uh, explaining so that we are on the same page. Now let's just go forward and see uh, the design and what we are trying to achieve over here. Um, so f the first uh, thing is that we are trying to do the service chaining locally on the nodes where your VMs would be, uh, would be available. And uh, so that would reduce the uh, latency. Uh, having faster reusable dynamic net network function uh, deployments so that uh, you have a low overhead of network infra uh, you know net network function infrastructure uh, itself and uh, it doesn't add a lot of weight to the uh, to your open stack infrastructure um, avoiding the loss of performance of network functions due to virtualization overhead so these are the main three things that we are having in mind uh, when we go ahead with the design. So, okay. So this is the solution design that we want to propose, but let me just give you a brief idea. So think about it uh, as you, um, you have access to a public cloud and you're running a couple of VMs. Uh, which is uh, performing some kind of business logic and generating a lot of network traffic. And now you want that network traffic to go through, uh, to, uh, through some kind of network functions. Uh, they could be multiple, like uh, they could be going through one function, get processed, go to another function, get processed. And as Anant explained, that would be your uh, service chain. So in a public cloud, you won't really have a lot of control over 
I mean, you can have a control in OpenStack uh, as so as to which region you want to put, but still a region would be huge. And uh, you won't have a control over which host your, uh, v you know, your VM is there and on which host your VNFs are running. So we thought, why not uh, utilize Docker? And since uh, we, we're getting so much positive result uh, from running VNFs on top of Docker, so uh, this is the design that we, we proposed. We would have a controller which could run anywhere, um, preferably on an OpenStack controller itself. And it has open, uh, you know, admin privileges, so it can talk to different components and understand that where exactly the tenant VMs are running. So uh, let's say for um, my host one runs tenant one and tenant two VMs, it could spawn the network functions in form of service chain um, on, on top of Docker on that host itself. And it, uh, let's say my uh, tenant one doesn't exist on host three, it doesn't go and spawn it over there. And uh, all the VMs for, of the uh, tenant one that are there on host one can you know, get serviced by the f network functions over there on top of Docker D, uh, on, on top of Docker. Uh, the agent over there would take care that uh, we're of this dynamic nature. We'll, we'll go uh, next into the node design itself. Okay, so this is my design per node. So I have my, uh, I have my controller, uh, which could talk uh, on with, the, with its northbound APIs to the southbound APIs of any kind of uh, you know, ODL or any kind of uh, SDN. And uh, my controller would talk to the agent. The, the controller is uh, one in number, uh, uh, and uh, the agent would be one agent per host. So the agent would actually configure the OVS, uh, this OVS is shared between the Docker D and the KVM, and uh, the agent would al also manage Docker D. I mean, uh, when I say manage, it can spawn network functions on top of Docker, uh, is what I mean. And uh, you would have different network functions, and uh, you could chain them by using OpenFlow rules over here, and uh, then your your traffic could go just go out. So uh, this is the basic design per node. Now, how it flows? How are we? Uh, how uh, am I expecting my packets to flow through the node? So instead of the um, packet going out and getting service chain somewhere else, and which would introduce a lot of latency, I want my packets to come out here and then uh, go to the. I mean, these are just kind of examples that I have taken. We could uh, we could have a router instance running on top of Docker D and uh, my traffic would go and get serviced over here. Let's say a VPN use case where you are adding a VPN header and all the other info required. <coughs> and then uh, my, my uh, packets come out here and then go to the firewall, get processed over there, and then they could go to any other VM on the network or they could go out um, external. So how are we exactly trying to service chain? This is, uh, this is the thought process. So we have OVS, and without changing the network header itself, uh, we, we would uh, add OVS uh, fl flows uh, to the flow table. This is kind of a small example. There could be many ways you could uh, route the traffic. It could be on basis of source IP, input port, or VLAN, or I mean, I'm sure most of us are aware of OpenFlow here. So you know the, you can you can do a lot more than just this. So based upon this, you can actually route your packets uh, to different network functions without changing header. And uh, uh, so so this is how we are thinking of uh, service chaining. So also uh, the other thing that could be done is uh, depending on what kind of VNFs we are using, we could uh, you know take a lot of different kind of policies uh, for routing. So it could be a exhaustive routing where you force all your traffic through the network functions, all the network functions, but that's a, that's a costly affair. So you could also have, uh, let's say you, are, you want your network functions to act upon the HTTP traffic only. So you could have a, a flow where you could just ask the, the traffic to port 80, uh, that would go through the service chaining and rest of the traffic doesn't go through that. Uh, the third use case is uh, 
maybe if you're just monitoring and you don't really want, uh, you know, in during the runtime your packets go through the uh, through the network functions. So you could have a replica based routing where you could uh, have uh, replicated packets which come out and uh, they go for the monitoring and similar kind of processes and get processed and go out. So, it, okay. So that is uh, something that can uh, be taken care by my agent itself. The advantages of this design would be that we ha get a high density and better utilization of the resources that we have in the cloud. Uh, the performance would be near metal performance uh, for network functions because we would be using SRIOV or DPDK uh, and uh, there would be no hyper calls uh, uh, due to the usage of you know containers as network functions and not using VMs as network functions. So we avoid that uh, additional hyper call uh, that would be, that gets introduced in case of VMs and. Uh, there would be a low latency since all the service chaining is happening locally on that particular node and once your packet goes out, it's not going somewhere else to get service chain. So you have a very low latency. Uh, you get all the Docker native advantages uh, like you know quicker build ship model that all gets carried forward, uh, forward as is. And in a public cloud model, it really works out well because that's where in a private cloud, you still have a lot of uh, um, control over, you know, you can get to know, you, you could have admin privileges and you could get to know wh what host your uh, VMs are running and you could, I mean, still you get a lot of advantages, but in, 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 a, in a case of pub public cloud model, you would see the real advantage of running this system. So uh, we, we figured out uh, these are the areas of work that needs to be done for that. And uh, we, we, uh, first would be running Docker and KVM on the same host machine. There are some challenges to it. Uh, we, were, uh, we thought that we need to change the uh, compute scheduler because right now if I, uh, if I run a compute instance for which manages Docker and there would be a compute instance which manages my KVM the, through libvirt, uh, both of them, when, when, when you run the resource tracker, they both would give you uh, info and that would get du duplicated. So we need to solve that and uh, it needs to be aware that both are running on the same host. It could be on basis of, uh, we could uh, put a UUID or host name. I mean, uh, there could be different ways of identifying host and then singling out that both are running together and we need to add that logic. Uh, and uh, there are uh, changes required on the OVS side as well because uh, it would be shared between um, your uh, Docker and KVM. So uh, then we need uh, to configure, the, uh, there would be a service, the, the component that would be configuring OVS, creating service chains using OVS open flow rule modifications. Uh, since OVS gives you a lot of other uh, info as well, like the throughput through a port and lot many such uh, things. So you, we could also add, uh, you know, performance HA and load balancing using the uh, those OVS features. Uh, then we go and uh, choose the best kind of routing for the packets uh, based on the type of, VN, uh, you know, uh, I'm sorry, that should be VNF. So. Uh, that the same thing that we discussed a couple of moments ago. So then we need a module that interacts with the Docker daemon and creates network functions uh, on the containers on demand. And then uh, tenant based visibility and segregation of Docker containers need to happen. So my tenant one shouldn't be able to see the network functions that are there for tenant two, uh, similar for, for all the other tenants. Uh, then we have we can store the we can take care, uh, you know advantage of all the uh, Docker registry and we could store a lot of stateful Docker images as well into the registry and spawn them on demand. So uh, the, there's no need for such um, I mean uh, such changes for stateless, but definitely it would be very helpful in case of stateful network functions. Uh, then obviously the implementation of controller and agent. We have started the implementation. Uh, this is the design that we have uh, zeroed, on, uh, zeroed down upon. And uh, we have started the implementation to some level. And uh, this is just like uh, kind of our side work and we would like to 
uh, work with the community and get your inputs on the design if you have any. And uh, even if you have like a similar thought process and you agree to what we're doing, why, uh, I mean, it would, it would be great if we could join together and do this. Thank you very much for your uh, time. Could, could we have any questions if, if anybody has? Yeah. Uh, this edition from uh, Comcast, uh, very interesting in the work. Uh, we also, you know, uh, tried uh, similar new things because of all the, you know, advantage you mentioned. Um, but we have uh, two things that really limited us. One is uh, there are not that many uh, V actually you can run inside the Docker, at least uh, like kind of production grade. Uh, I don't know if uh, you can provide, you know, some of the options. So that is a challenge we also faced actually. There aren't that many Docker images which are directly, you know, VNF images which you can directly run on Docker. Okay. But that is something we are also working at, uh, standardizing that way of creating from, um, uh, you know, using a Docker file to just spin up Docker images from our existing software. That is a challenge, I agree, but that is something we are also trying to overcome. Okay. Um, the, the second one is really, uh, I think, one of the unique aspects of NIV in running inside Docker is the, the, the network I/O, the throughput. Um, if I understand correctly, when you run a Docker, you put in the in the network in the namespace, so the the packet actually goes through the, the kernel. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I think one on one slide you mentioned about DPDK, so just you know, want to get your. They say you know theoretically like how you can make you know the, the kernel and then your DPDK you know, work together. So um, actually th this is uh, something that we were also actually reading up on, but where to do the routing, whether to do it in the user space or the kernel space. It can be done on both the sites. Kernel space, of course, gives you a better performance, but it's less flexible. So that's a trade-off you'll have to take. So it's a design choice at the end of the day. Okay. Yeah, you, you mentioned one of the slides, you mentioned that you, you can achieve uh, like line rate with uh, SROV and and DPDK, is that something uh, you, you verified uh, in the lab, in, in this uh, setup? That is something, yes, uh, we haven't verified personally, but I have seen a paper from Intel where they have verified that. So when I share the PPT, you would I'll give a reference to that, so you can probably point, yeah. uh, check that from there. All right, thank Thanks. you. Thanks for the presentation. It's uh, definitely will come in handy, actually. So uh, with, uh, with the recent talks that we have been attending, right, so there are so many uh, talks that talked about implementation of yet another controller agent, mm -hmm. especially in the Magnum, uh, yeah. you know, Docker Kubernetes space. So why have you thought about implementing this with Magnum, Conductor, and Heat instead of implementing yet another controller agent architecture? So yeah, we were looking at that, but uh, we, we thought that, uh, I mean, that is always an, an open option. Uh, we, none of us had a lot of expertise on the Magnum itself, so we, we kind of uh, held that back, but you know, if, if it can be integrated, we can definitely right. go ahead and do that. This okay. is more at, at a concept level that right. we wanted to say a controller. Okay. It could as well be the controller uh, which provisions on Magnum as well, because Magnum allows you to provision on VM as well as bare metal. So it is at a concept level, it will fit in there as well. Since we have not gone into the implementation details, we have Also, we uh, read that uh, a little uh, on Magnum, that Magnum would give you a full or no control kind of scenario. We wanted multi-tenancy, a proper multi-tenancy, so that your VNFs are not visible. That was actually one of the thought processes while we took forward and we left Magnum. Okay, so there is a courier coming as well. Yeah, so yeah, that's, I, that's something that you I think take, once so. that is there, we can definitely look right. into that. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'm a, from Intel. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that the hypercore, overhead of hypercore. Yeah. Yep. Can you, you know, give me a, a specific hypercore? I'm not sure we are really you know, using a hypercore in, the, in this case. So. In this case, we are not using the hypercore yes. because there is no hypercore. No, no, even you run the, the VM, yeah. I don't think we're gonna. No, th those VMs are not actually running your network functions. Your network functions are uh, run in, in the Docker instances. So uh, we, no, we. No, no, I think uh, even you ran, yeah. if you use the VMs, mm -hmm. I don't think uh, you, you know, those VMs gonna uh, generate hypercores. I mean, did you, you know, really so, try uh, to run the, the VM and then to see if you did, 
you, you sell some hyper calls? That's my question. No, so we haven't uh, experimented that part for with with respect to this work as such, okay. but we have worked with VMs and hyper calls previously. Yes, definitely when you run any uh, disk intensive or network intensive uh, software or operation on a VM, that would go through an indirection through the hypervisor. So that is what we want to say here that uh, it is not there because Docker here runs on bare metal. There is no extra hypervisor layer per se. I know there are hardware assisted okay. virtualizations. Yeah. KVM itself is one such. Yes, there are optimizations over there. But it has been proven that uh, containers are definitely performance wise more optimized than VMs running on a hypervisor. So that was the point we were trying to yeah. clarify there. But personally, we haven't gone into the implementation here. So yeah. we haven't verified uh, whether uh, in this case, in a VM and VNF's performance, is it giving a better result running on a container than a VM? We haven't verified. It's, so it's again just an idea. Yeah, so we we we've gone through some of the papers on uh, from Intel itself, okay. and they point to a very uh, similar scene, where they are proposing that uh, you know with 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 proper data, maybe once we complete the implementation, we could do that. Uh, uh, the uh, we we complete the prototype. We could give you the with with the data itself, but that comes from your company itself. That uh, okay. Yeah, I think uh, when you get the, when you try to get the high performance from uh, Docker's, even Docker's, mm -hmm. you need to, for example, have a uh, SRV or yes. the large pages or NUMA. Lots of uh, you know Correct. optimizations are required to get the you know line date. There's a lot of scope right? for uh, innovation there. And, and there also and the context switch between that the OBS and then uh, the Docker cell, you know, themselves yeah. can be, you know. Uh, significant. So. Yeah, thank, you. Right. Yeah. thank you. We're very interested in this specific use case too mm -hmm. of the container and a service, kind of a degenerate service chain right in front of the port to yeah. the network. Um, have you thought about how you're going to orchestrate that? Is it, it would be really nice if this was back in Neutron, it was a call that the tenant itself could make to set this up. I didn't yes. see anything about the API. Yes, we, we, we are trying to, uh, so when I was uh, trying to say that my controller would go, uh, uh, it's not bound API would talk to southbound API of uh, SDN. It could talk to uh, Neutron as well. So yes, we are uh, in thoughts of doing that. Yeah, um, and someone asked about uh, the Docker images and the, the yes. scarcity of them. Uh, what we're thinking about for kind of a reference implementation okay. would be an image of IP tables, an image of Snort, um, it's all public domain stuff, we could make them. So uh, but I tried out a couple of images uh, that are available and I think they work just fine. I don't know about the performance because I, because I didn't uh, actually put them through a lot of network traffic and didn't do performance analysis on top of that because the, right now was the whole orchestration thing was my uh, the, the problem that I was trying to solve. Uh, I think once the orchestration is complete, then we go forward and look at the performance, what kind of performance you're getting and what kind of optimizations you want to do to increase the performance. So uh, so definitely, yes, uh, I, I did look at a lot of network functions. They, they, act, they are actually doing the functions that they're supposed to do. I'm not too sure on the performance numbers. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions, guys? Okay, then okay. we'll Thank wrap you. up. So we'll Thank share you the presentation. Time. Thank you. We'll share the presentation with our uh, mail IDs. So if you want to connect back later on, uh, it would be awesome to have you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.